All right. Hopefully you guys had a nice little break. Welcome to part two of uh, our first class of the beauty of brushwork, painting clouds, trees, and water. Nice long title for a class. Um, can everybody hear me okay? Yep. Yep. So yep. I'm just setting up my palette. And um, what I've got going on so far is I've got my very typical split primary palette of titanium white, a lemon yellow. I think this is actually Hansa yellow light, Indian yellow, which is a transparent warm yellow. Uh, what red am I using today? Naphthal scarlet. So it kind of works as a cadmium red medium, but it's a little more on the trans, just slightly more transparent, uh, quite warm. I really like it, especially with painting clouds. Um, I do find that I like transparency when I'm painting uh, my sky a lot. So a lot of times if I have a choice between like a cadmium or a Hansa or a cadmium and a naphthal scarlet, I will just kind of look on the back and see semi-transparent or transparent. And I may lean towards that um, in the sky areas. Um, this is quinacridone red, which is what I use instead of an alizarin red, um, just gives me more options, can go brighter. Um, than a lizard can, so I can really get those bright, bright pinks if I want. Makes gorgeous uh, salmon and peach colors. Um, this is ultramarine blue, which is a reddish blue or a blue that leans towards purple. Um, and then my manganese blue, which is a blue that leans towards green a little bit more. Um, also in my palette here, so I've been storing my paints in this um, Tupperware palette here is my lid that just goes on. Um, could throw that in the freezer and I just store my paint. These are just leftovers. Um, so at the end of the day, when I'm cleaning up my piles, I will generally kind of keep my like warmer colors together and my cooler colors or my reddish colors and my bluish colors or whatever. And I end up making just kind of nice uh, browns and uh, neutral colors. I'm not going to be using those Today, I don't think I'm kind of looking like, oh, maybe I could use a little bit of, I don't know. We'll just grab a little bit of a kind of tertiary brown color there, um, see if it works. The painting that I'm going to be doing is the farm scene with the big clouds, grabbing a little tape so I can tape it up so you can see it. It is on our Padlet page underneath the photos, I hope. If you don't see it, well, maybe let me know and I'll load it. Um, you do not need to do this scene, but if you'd like to, you're more than welcome to uh, do a paint along with me. Um, this is just a little farm off Highway 99, um, out in wine country here. There's actually some vineyards in the very background there. All right, so what is the first thing I'm gonna ask from my painting? I, and there's two, op, there's two, two possible answers here. What's the first thing I'm gonna ask of this painting? Where's the light? Lights, coming? lights. <laughs> <laughs> where is the light? And then where's my horizon? And where's and my horizon? horizon? You guys are great, nailed it. Yeah. Hey. Those Oftentimes when I'm outdoors painting or, you know, out plein air painting or even just in the studio and looking at references, I want to say, where is my light source and where is the horizon? All right. All right. Just got a delivery, so I was just checking on that. Um. And so when I'm looking at the clouds here, I can see that there's a lighter side and a darker side. And this appears to be kind of um, midday, kind of maybe, you know, maybe so the sun is up above coming down. If it were early in the morning or late in the evening, right, the sun will be much lower and off to the side. 
but midday up above and uh, I'm kind of going to be looking into these trees, uh, the shrubs as well. So I can tell that it's very much top lit. The sun is up above in the sky, which is generally the case when you have blue skies. You're going to uh, have more midday light. Um, when the light, when the color begins to change in the scene, of course, it will oftentimes mean that the sun is lower on the horizon line, morning or evening. Michael, I have a quick question for you. Right now I'm getting to see everybody, which is great, but I wonder if the camera is capable of focusing on just you painting because I can't see your your photograph except in the very Yeah, let me, I've got it pinned for everybody. I thought, speaker. Did that do anything? No, but that's okay. <laughs> are, you, are you hiding your thumbnail video up at the top of the little strip? Are you, um, there's different adjustments you can make. The little strip showing all of our pictures, you may be able to adjust it that way. Um, I've just tried and can't do it. So I don't know that it's, uh, I don't know that it's uh, the Zoom software or whether it's mine, but that's all right. If Mike can't do it, if I will you, if wait. If you go to the view on the upper right-hand corner, you can change the view. Yeah, so I put, I normally put pin for everybody or pin. Um, you're right, upper right hand corner view and have it on speaker. Yeah. Michael, no, I lost. Or you can yeah, there, now it's back. All right, yeah, I was just experimenting, seeing if I went and redid it, if it would. Uh, so is that working? Um, yeah, so very top right hand corner view and just go to speaker, I guess. Yeah. All right. Great. Hopefully that works for everybody. And full screen. Okay. So I figured out my light source. My horizon line, you know, because this is um, got, you know, kind of rolling hills, my horizon line's really a little bit below the hill. Um, a great, uh, thing to remember when you are out plein air painting and if you're in a place where you kind of can't tell where the horizon line is just know that it's basically at your eye level um and when we're taking photos because i liked the clouds in this i actually have multiple photos i have some where the reflection becomes more dominant i have some where i've even zoomed in past the water um, and then I wanted, I like this one because I like the cloud formation and structure. So this is more about the clouds and less about the ground plane. And so that basically it's kind of that rule of thirds, one, two, three. And so two thirds of this painting are taken up by clouds or the sky. Basically, it's another way of me telling the viewer what I think is important, what I'm focusing on for this painting and um, everything else. So just going to mix up a little bit of color. Uh, would you guys like to see this done as a wipe away or would you like to see it as a more direct kind of sketching out the uh, design a little bit? I'd like to I'd say um sketch it out okay right, sketching out. let me see the design let's Ma see that design yeah good idea My michael is this is is your um canvas is it a square or is it a rectangle it's not it does look like that i don't know why it looks squarish oh Weird. okay like there it's not yeah no that's fine i was just curious yeah, it's a nine inch by 12 inch, so three by four. But I was think I was looking at my computer and yeah, it looks like a square. And then when I straighten it out, watch it becomes a rectangle. I don't know. Optical mm -hmm. illusion. Camera Optical illusion. 12 inches tall, nine inches wide. 
and it is on a, done on a birch panel. All right, so a little pink enter to that, so it can uh, and I actually make it a little more purple. So I made kind of an ugly purple, and I'm going to make it a touch, touch, touch on the redder side. I don't know really why, because there's not really any red going on in my scene. Um, ugly purple, okay. Yeah, ugly purple. And you could do it with whatever color. I remember when I was starting out, I always thought I should be doing it with like a yellow because, you know, yellow is so light and it's not going to show up. But I found that actually I really like quinacridone red. Um, it doesn't seem to muddy up and it works with kind of the, the color schemes that I like uh, with the warm edges on things and stuff like that. Adding just, just again, a touch of paint thinner. I want it to slide, slip and slide across. This is a nice soft brush. I think it will be fun for sketching. And like I said, my ground is about a third. So it's right about here. So just kind of make a mark to show you where my ground is. And then my hill comes up just a little above, above that. So this is kind of the top of my ground. My pond is pretty big here. So there's actually in this scene, not too much of it is actually ground. It's water more than ground, and then the sky much more than both. So it's like a two to three water. And this is too, too soft for sketching for me. I like a little bit of a, so there we go. That feels better. And it's always funny for me drawing because normally I would stand right in front of my canvas, but because of the camera, I'm having to stand to the left of my canvas and paint. Um, holding it to the towards the right. So it's always kind of interesting feeling to get into for just a little bit. So I want to keep very, very, very abstract in the beginning. That's something I really, I actually put, wrote a couple notes last night. And one of my big notes is that we, if, if you guys can come away from this eight weeks, six weeks, seven weeks, I don't know how long the class is, but if you can come away from it with the idea that we do not paint things. So it's kind of a funny thing to bring up since the literally the title of the class is how to paint clouds trees rocks and water but the biggest takeaway <laughs> is <laughs> is that we don't we paint shapes values colors and edges is what we paint and those are going to, so, and then we're going to learn to observe the differences in those things. Like what, what is the difference in an edge quality between a cloud and a tree and a rock? What's the difference in the edge quality between the crisper, sharper side of the clouds and the soft kind of diffuse side of the clouds same things happening in the waves same things happening in the ripples in the water so right now i'm just looking for shapes i'm just looking for dark shapes and light shapes and i like to paint oftentimes from my darkest to my lightest and even though these this painting is mostly about the sky, definitely all of my darks exist down here. I've got some mid values up here. If I were to, you know, look at a black and white photo, but 
most of the darks, uh, all of the darks, happen in the, the ground. I'm also painting from thin paint to thick paint. So this paint is all going on quite thin. That's also, it's got a touch of paint thinner, the Gamsol. And it also, I'm also pushing it pretty far. I'm not letting, I'm not leaving big thick dabs of the paint on there. Okay. I don't want to add white to my underpainting when I'm getting in my darks and stuff generally. I can, but uh, I generally like to just use, um, I'm going to use my paper towel and kind of wipe away some of this. going to add a little more blue. Cool it down just a touch. And let's see, what is that structure? What is that shape? of these uh, of these clouds what is you know it's got this nice kind of turning motion to it what parts do i want to play up what parts do i want to make less important i'm also looking for lines that help me to understand the shapes and the direction. I'm gonna go ahead and connect. There's a space in here that it creates again, kind of a weird tangent that these clouds kind of fit in so perfectly together. So I'm just going to go ahead and link them. Starts off really just messy. These are just notes for myself while I'm kind of experimenting to see what I want from this, from this painting, what I want from these clouds, what design is working, what structures are working. And what's not, I'm looking, as I'm slowly moving my eye around, I'm looking for the tangents, I'm looking for nonsensical lines, I'm looking for lines that might be combating against the uh, structure that I want to convey. So real quickly, let's just uh, get some of the shadows of these clouds, just so we know where the bottoms and the tops are. Again, keeping that paint nice and thin. I'm going to cool that down even more so just so you, it's easier for you guys to understand what I'm doing because otherwise <clears throat> they're just notes again. Man, the Quinacridone is so warm compared to the manganese. So it keeps wanting to go purple and cool red or warm really fast. Messy, messy, messy. 
Again, just notes for myself. I'm going to kind of blur these down so that we can Looks like a sunset painting now. So I'm just trying to figure out kind of what's the movement of these clouds that I want to convey in this piece. And is it gonna work or do I need to come in and move things around a little bit? It's much better, even if it's embarrassing to have this painting that looks like such a mess, I have to get over it and just go, you know what, it's a lot better to figure these things out now. It's a lot harder to change them later. So let's see if I can figure out this shape again. It's not a bit there. Just taking a little bit of paint thinner on the paper towel. And that's what I like about oil paint so much is this flexibility of kind of working, reworking, trying to figure something out. I'm always very impressed when I see artists that just kind of knock things out first try, but that's not me generally. I'm just, I like to kind of feel things out, looking for flow, looking for motion, looking for, you know, elegant lines and movement. And, uh, you know, looking at the reference sort of. So I'm looking at this and now they're starting to connect too much here. So I'm gonna bring this cloud forward even more. Maybe let's see how that hole looks in here. One of the base right underneath this cloud that's going up, just to break it up a little bit. And again, it feels like part of me is like going, paint faster, get, you know, just start putting in color, make it interesting. But I just know that if I get the design and the structure to a point where I'm comfortable with it and it makes sense to me, that all of the rest of it is so much quicker. Design and structure are so important. I mean, the whole rest of the painting, you literally just cannot paint your way out. No amount of beautiful colors will save bad design. And also, it's nothing worse than trying to fix a painting halfway through. Just like everybody else, I love it when my design just comes and just flows and just works. But the truth is more often than not, it's a little bit of a wrestling match, especially if I haven't done thumbnail sketches or figured out a lot of the questions because now I'm having to 
figure them out as I go. All right. All right, so it's a mess, but I think I'm understanding the design and what I'm going to want from this. And the good thing is it's nice and thin. I'll be able to cover all of this paint very quickly. There's just not a lot of paint, and it does have just a touch, just a touch of paint thinner. Too much, and it gets runny and streaky, and it's really hard, very slick, hard to put more paint on top of. Just the right amount, and it starts to tack up very quickly. and um, and will allow me to add more paint. So let's turn this into a pile of dark. A little yellow to that because I don't need it to be so purple. Like that. Let's mix a pile of the green that's going to be in the ground a little bit here. It's got quite a bit of red in it. Not that much, just turned it to orange. So let's bring back some blue. Nice and earthy. All right, let's bring in some more of the greens from some of the shrubs a little bit. I'm describing both yellows, a little bit of red. I just kind of want a nice greenish brown. Greenish brown. Greenish brown, yeah. Uh, even though I say, like, you know, I want the greens of these shrubs, I know they're not really green. Most things are not really any primary color or secondary color. They're always kind of dishes, I'd say. They're brownish, greenish, orangish. And then I say, you know, what's the next? They're more leaning towards the yellows and the fall colors, the browns and the reds. There we go. All right. Let's get into some of those purer sky colors. So at the top of our sky, we've got some really nice, strong blue. It gets a little greener as it goes down. Let's see what happens if we just do a little bit of the ultramarine with white, making it a little lighter, a little bringing out some of its vibrancy almost, but definitely too purple, or definitely too uh, high chroma, too reddish blue, I guess. So let's add a little bit of manganese to that. Getting a little closer, make a little more manganese even. Just kind of looking for these colors in this area. And again, this is a, you know, a print of a photo of the real thing. So I don't need to be exact because I don't need to copy a print of a photo. I'm just using this as a reference, as a jumping off point. I 
it got really kind of greenish. So I added a little bit of that ultramarine, maybe too much. Yep, probably too much. I prefer to sneak up on colors, but at that time I just went flying by. Added too much ultramarine. There we go, getting back towards greenish. And now it's just a matter of finding the right value or how much white to add to it. And I may need to add a little bit of yellow to it as well. Pulled away some of the yellow, so it was a little too strong, as opposed to just mixing a great big pile. And I like doing where I can see the colors and the transitions. It'll help me to kind of mix up and where to put them on the on the surface when I'm painting. I can definitely, if I start taking up my whole palette clean them up into piles. So that I have more work surface. I still need to mix up my grays and my whites for my clouds. Nearly running out of white, so make sure I reload that. And to make my gray, I'm gonna first make basically a really dark color. So I'm gonna take a bit of ultramarine, bit of, so it's like three fourths, Ultramarine blue, I'm gonna take about, about a fourth of the, uh, of the um, naphthol scarlet. Then I'm gonna grab just a little bit of the yellow. The yellow, what's gonna happen with the, all that ultramarine and that naphthol is gonna make a really dirty plum, really dark, dirty plum color. And then that yellow, is gonna come in and neutralize that purplish plum color because it's the opposite on the color wheel. I don't have scarlet. What would be closer to a color close to it? For what's that? For natural scarlet would be your cadmium medium. Okay. Or cadmium light, cadmium red light. Okay. Thanks. So you're making a brown or a, a gray? I'm trying to make a black, and now I'm going to make it into a gray. Oh. So I can test it by oh. simply adding a little white, and it's still very purple. So I may need a little more yellow in that mix. It's pretty Possibly cool. even a little more red. So I'm just going to grab a little more red. And so that's the only way I can tell, because it's so dark. I can't really see what color it is. But then when I add a little bit of white, I can go, oh, it's really leaning towards blue purple. So what's if I want to get a neutral dark, which I kind of do in this instance, normally that's not that useful, but this is really quite neutral. And that looks like it's got really warm. Let's add a little white to that and see where we're at now. A little closer. Still, it's just a warmer purple now. I have to decide what do I want to, you know, between a bluish purple, a reddish purple. So I'm going to do just, I'm going to test. A little more yellow and see what that does. Again, yellow is the opposite of purple on the color wheel. So it should neutralize that color. 
Mm. All right, there we go. See how much more neutral of a purple that is? Or neutral of a gray? Mm. So I think we are in. Yeah. I'm in the neutral gray category. I think we're going to be able to get started painting. So I've got my very messy abstract design. I'm just thinking shapes and values. And now I'm going to come back in with uh, these pre-mixed mother colors here and attack it and see how much can we get done in the next 30 minutes. I bet you we can get really far. So it feels like it took a lot of time to get started. I had to kind of go back and forth. I wasn't quite feeling my sky yet. Um, there was something off, and there still kind of is as I come back to it, um, unfortunately. And I'm not positive. Oops. Uh, what I'm not quite liking about it, about this structure. And maybe it is that connection somehow. Michael, can I ask you? I mean, if I squint at this, um, uh, and I see the sky in the background, uh, it's a it's a value that uh, kind of matches the the shadow part of the cloud uh, um the you know on the left upper side of the of the photo yeah so so why did you not paint those why did you not paint the value in of the sky but you so that the so right now it looks to me that the clouds are a Darker. different Right, the clouds are the a, a darker value than the sky is at this point in your sketch. Yeah, that is, that's a really good question, um, and I did it because it's just kind of notes for me, and I also love the glowiness of this blue. Mm -hmm. That if I put it in kind of transparently, I think it may really shine from behind a little bit. So I guess I should have explained that a little bit here. Um, we'll see. But yeah, that is a great question because I didn't really, yeah, if, if this was a black and white photo, it would look very different value structure wise than that. That is exactly right. Um, and that's what I, yeah, that's the tough part is a lot of times these are just notes for me. You know what I mean? It's like doing a blueprint in your own language where, you know, you're the only one that has to be able to read it and know where you're going. So let's see if I can um, paint for a couple minutes and make it read a lot better for you. So I'm going to start with my darks. Um, generally, my darks are my thinnest. I like to paint dark to light, thin to thick, and also big to small. But these darks are going to give us my structure. So I'm going to quickly come in and give myself a bit of a foundation to build on here. But yeah, that was a really good question. You're right. If I was doing a true wipe away method painting um, and really designing my structure, it would have been probably quite a bit different, the design structure that is. That's one of the hardest things about teaching and painting like in front of people for me is that I kind of, you develop your own shorthand. And, you know, when you're painting by yourself, for yourself all the time, because you're just trying to get as successfully as possible to the next stage of the painting. Um, and then I kind of forget sometimes when I'm painting as an instructor or as, you know, putting on a bit of a, a show or whatever it is um, that I need to have the different stages make more sense logically um, to everybody that's present. But 
But I do urge you as you progress as painters to develop your own shorthand and develop your own kind of method of painting and building up the structure that works for you. The painting does not and should not look beautiful most of the time. So I'm just looking for my darks, my underlying darks. Grab a little bigger brush. Now this is my opportunity to come in with the shadow sides, the darker sides of these clouds and start to kind of begin ever so slightly to refine them, to figure out kind of what is that shape? What is that? structure. And what I'm going to do is see this band of clouds coming through here. I want them to appear bigger than this cloud. And this cloud right now feels bigger than these, even though it's behind it and further away. So I'm going to bring the base, the bottom of these clouds down a little bit, cutting off the top of that guy. So we just kind of peeking out from beneath, beneath and behind. My light source again, top to the right a little bit. Keep reminding myself that as I'm putting in my darks, which oftentimes means my shadows. Any questions about the chaos that I'm making right now? Again, just getting in there, getting my shadows, my darks of each thing gives me oftentimes my form and my structure. Not always, depending on where the light is and everything else. I love the colors. If I was painting it, I would be telling myself, it's gone. It's a goner. <laughs> oh, at this stage? <laughs> yes. I would be very worried. <laughs> yeah, isn't that funny? I mean, uh, it, it, I mean, yeah, it's, it does worry me sometimes when paintings are really ugly, but I have to. It's just like the really, again, I've, I call it the awkward teenage years is the painting's got to go through all the zits and all the acne and all the clumsiness until it, you know, really starts to figure out who it is. And as I'm kind of discovering that, um, along with the painting, and I'm just kind of, okay, that's darker, that's lighter, that's warmer, that's cooler. Um, you know, what can I do to help this ugly, 
<laughs> uncomfortable, cumbersome teenager find themselves and become happy in their skin. <laughs> so That's ugly... funny because I always call it pimply stage. I'm sorry, what do you do? I said, I, that's funny that you say that because I always call it the pimply stage. Oh, yeah, yeah. The ugly teenage years or stage. The ugly teenage years. Yeah. The awkward. I, I should say awkward. No teenagers are ugly, right? Awkward. Awkward. Yeah. Awkward. Yes. Awkward. Very true. I've got a teenager in my house. She would not like to be called ugly. No, no. Terrible Probably not awkward say. either, but I think I could get away with that a little easier. But at this <laughs> point, my, I, what I love seeing, Michael, is how how directional this painting has become versus it's much. I mean, uh, yeah, the, 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 such a strong um, center point, which I just didn't see in the painting. I mean, in the photo at all, and. Uh, I really, I really can see what you've done to emphasize that, that, you know, all those, uh, what, do you, what do you want to call them, diagonals that come to a similar um, hub. What's really right. yeah, yeah, it's movement, it's the elegant lines, it's all the things that, you know, this paint, this photo gives me a lot, but it doesn't give me near all of it or oh. enough. Um, so what what why did you why did you I, I I think that I didn't hear and I think you probably already said it but why did you do an underpainting in uh you know in the uh, in the red well I'm hoping that that color will disappear and blend into all the other colors nicely um it may have been a bit of a mistake we will see because this painting really doesn't have a lot of red but I do know that for me, quinacridone seems to disappear without muddying up colors as much. It's a weird belief, and I've never heard anybody else really say it, but it seems to me that it just kind of disappears nicely, and that generally <laughs> we need more red in our mixes. So it just, and you also, if you know my work, know that I love like those kind of warm halos around things and I just kind of like warm uh <clears throat> warmer feeling paintings so even though this painting is very blue and green and cool we'll see I you know I can always paint that out later but I often feel like a little bit of warmth for me doesn't hurt um but that doesn't mean I'm right. <laughs> I always reserve the right to change my mind as the painting is progressing. And, you know, again, like I said, we're helping this, you know, awkward teenager to get comfortable in its skin, but we're learning together. You know, it's not like I'm the dad I know best. This is who you're going to be when you grow up. It's, you know what, let's, here's some avenues, here's some choices, here's some opportunities. And let's see, you know, does this work? Nope. Okay. Do you, do you work? still have a uh, Gamsol in there or is it straight paint now? It's mostly straight paint. This is a pre, um, a pre gessoed panel. And so it's very slick compared to if I did it myself, um, normally I would put my one or two more coats of gesso on top of this of my own just because it's so slippery. Um, it, the paint has a hard time sticking to it. Um, so the paint's gonna appear kind of translucent. Like even that green, you can see the white through that green paint that I just put on. Mm -hmm. Trying to get a little band of light up here. Get some dark green here for the shrubs and get a little redder. Yeah, and the other thing is I'm using all, yeah, every paint I have on there is 
transparent or semi-transparent, which besides my white is my only opaque, um, fully opaque paint. So that, that, that can get me in a little bit of trouble. So I just don't have the coverage. So all the paint is letting light get through it, which can be nice and have some really beautiful effects. But if I want to get coverage, you know, then I might be in some trouble. Or it might take more than one coat of paint. Or I may just have to leave thicker brush strokes down, a little more impressionistic, a little more juicy brush strokes will, uh, you know, make the paint more opaque, just thicker paint, of course. I think the red underpainting, it just gives it a glow. Once you get everything on, that's going to, with all the transparent colors, you'll see this kind of magical glow through all of those colors. Right. And without it apparently being, you know, red. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of impressionists kind of use similar tricks, um, you know, and there's a vibrancy to it. But we'll see. And I, like I said, I can always um, go back in and, you know, cover it up more of it. I don't need to have as much red. A lot of times I'm kind of painting up to the edge of things. Oh, Michael. Yep. Um, what I love about your ability to um, create the depth, how it moves back, the different layers, is that done with dark light, dark light? Like you see the grass, then it moves further and further into the distance. That's something I want to accomplish in my paintings. How is that? Uh, I mean, right now it's all about overlapping forms because I don't have much grade or much value or um, chroma change uh -huh. from like this back hill to here. Right now it's all about kind of diminishing shapes like bigger, medium, small, okay. and then overlapping of forms. This overlaps this, overlaps this. Okay. Um, but when I get finished, I will probably come back in and I could actually probably do that right now is I will probably actually cool some of these darks down back here just a little bit. Let's zoom in, even though you're going to see how messy and brushy well, it all is. Well, it's beautiful right now. right now. I see I see the um, plan. Oops, sorry. Oops. Um, so as I go from here to here, and I'm looking at the darks, from the darks here to the darks here, to the darks way back there, I am going to let my darks get a little bit lighter. Okay. A little so, bluer back here. So it's forms getting getting large to small, color diminishing the further back it goes. Okay. Yeah, and oftentimes cooler. Cooler. As they go back. Okay. And I'm letting them stay pretty warm in here and in here. But I still want the dark. Yeah, it's interesting how slippery the surface is. It's uh, uh... I would be so um mine would be so muddy at this point. I'm just so uh, amazed that. <laughs> Somehow the colors are still separated. Well, you, I mean, that's one of the things about that red, too, is I kind of let them bump up against it. So there's almost, let me zoom in even more, and you'll really see how ugly this is right now. But look at, I mean, there's a lot of space uh, there, a lot of space between things still. So I'm, when I paint up towards things, it's, um, it gets, it gives me a little, a little bit of a, a safety net. So like right now I'm going to come in with some of these blues 
<laughs> that is really intense. Let's see. Uh, probably no, just... the close up is really helpful. Okay. Not what I want. <laughs> It feels so dark. So whoever it was that mentioned earlier that my values were way off, that my that the blue was much darker, was completely right. And now this part is getting a little bit optically weird to me. And until I get in and add those lights, I think it's going to be a very odd feeling. So again, I'm just going to have to go, okay, back to those. Now it's the ultra awkward teenage years because it's... Uh, you know, these notes that were just for me are getting a little bit tough to read. Or they're feeling like they're in reverse. So that was a great observation and something that, yeah, I would probably do differently next time. But I also do like the idea of making these blues somewhat transparent. We'll see if I can do that here in just a little bit. Where's my shape? Oops, too green. <laughs> so ugly. Oh man, it's not good. He'll pull it together. We'll pull it together. He'll put well, a little. I'm just talking on. about mine. <laughs> But yeah, that's what gets you in trouble too, though, is if you go in painting, thinking I'm painting things and paint, you know, these don't look like clouds. This is just crazy, crazy mess. This doesn't look like, you know, whatever it is. Um, look at that. I mean, that is chaos. If I came around and saw you guys painting this, I would just, you know, have to stop and say something. We'd have to have a discussion. What would you say? I would say that let's get some of those whites in those clouds. Okay. And I would just make sure that you weren't happy with what's happening. <laughs> it looks chaotic. Um, I would just make sure that you were in progress. That's that's one of the tough things about being an instructor and walking around is everybody's, you know, nobody wants me to come around when their painting's in progress. But that's when I'm the most help. Um, Let's see if I can, I'm going to look to my shapes a little bit. I'm just going to kind of move some of this around and then I'm going to come back in. Well, I guess I should get some of that in the water. I'm going to come back in and add those whites. And I, I'm hoping, <laughs> always hoping that it's going to really start to make sense. We can't see your hand now, given the position of the camera. Thank you very much. Perfect. Just adding some blue down there. All right, I'm going to move some of this blue around. The brush is very crusty there, so I'm just softening it up. Have you been wiping off your brush a lot? Um, this one I did. This was actually, that was a brush with no paint on it. Good question. So yeah, now I'm gonna, I'm just taking the paint that's on there and giving it a little better um, a shape because it was just kind of globbed on there, just kind of testing colors.
And I'm just looking to the kind of abstract shapes of my of my blue space in the reference photo, seeing which of those, you know, I've looked to the cloud shapes. Now I'm looking to the background, the sky shapes, and seeing which ones I like, which ones I don't like, which ones might be useful. But keeping everything very abstract, for lack of a better word. I'm just, I'm not really thinking things. I'm just thinking shapes, values, and now colors. And let's clear a little section to start getting some white on there, because that's what's going to actually allow me to judge this painting, as it were. So I added just a touch of quinacridone in there and it sure got, oh, you guys can't even see that. Let me zoom back out, sorry. So I'm mixing my light colors over here and uh, what kind of a mid, a little light mid grayish color. I'm letting it get a touch warmer so that it can, uh, Yeah, it is interesting um, because I always gesso my own panels. I just didn't have one this morning and I should have prepped it yesterday because if I wanted to gesso it before class, I would have had to have gessoed it yesterday. Um, anyways, didn't have one ready. So I just grabbed a pre-gessoed one. And it is interesting how you get used to your own, the structure of your own uh, surfaces that you prepare. So it's, yeah, really interestingly slippery. Not an excuse, just an observation. Unless I need the excuse, then it's an excuse. <laughs> But I know some uh, people who really, really love the slick, non-absorbent surfaces. And it's really interesting to me because, yeah, the paint just moves and moves and moves and slides and slides. So I've got my big kind of piles of paint there. And now I'll kind of come back in and add a little more kind of finesse, kind of soften and crisp and edges, start crisping edges. It's going to get a lot lighter. I'm, I've reserved uh, white. So this is the color that I was just putting on is kind of a, I don't know, kind of a very gray purpley color. And the color that I'll end up with will be almost a yellowy, fairly yellowy white will give me a lot of room 
to uh, get lighter and add more interest, hopefully, to it, to the clouds. So first I will come through and kind of finesse some of these so that there's a connection between the darks and the lights and a transition. So I'm just kind of blending that in using the paint that's on the surface, using the paint that's on my brush and uh, Did you just switch brushes? No, it's the same brush, I think. I mean, I do have two brushes over here, but this one has the blue paint on it. I've been wiping it down a little bit. That's lovely. Still really dark and stuff, but thank you. Yeah, it's coming along. I think, I mean. I see the vision. Yeah, there you go. See the potential in this yes. ugly teenage kid. Um, so watch as I, I'm changing the pressure on the brush so I can, you know, push down in some areas, pick up paint, move it, let it skim across, uh, just letting it kind of dance. And then as I'm, getting moving on further, I'll start to find the areas of my clouds that are a little denser, meaning the edges are a little crisper, and then edges where the, there's areas where the edges are really soft and diffused. And uh, Getting rid of more and more of that kind of purpley outline of everything. Don't want too, too much, otherwise it's not special. It's funny, I really thought this painting would be a lot easier than doing a colorful sunset, but it's got its own, own problems, own struggles, which is makes it more interesting for me. Don't rarely want a painting to be simple and boring, and you're not challenging yourself. But you also don't want it to be completely frustrating and beyond, you know, too beyond your capabilities. You want to just barely be pushing yourself every time a little bit, trying something new, going beyond your skill set just a little. I've noticed lately when I've been painting that that sideways, sideways brush stroke are just... I don't know, somehow just looks better when you stand back it, from it. Well, it depends on how the light's hitting it, but yeah. 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 And hopefully when I let them dry enough and put varnish on it, it won't take the, move the paint. I ruined my grandfather's painting. I had to repaint it. The whole thing? Yeah, I just started over on another canvas. Oh man, sorry to hear that. I'm sure it will be a little faster and easier and better than the first time. So that's yeah, feel like that, but 
Well, maybe it'll, you'll feel like you and, and grandpa are conspiring on this painting together. Yeah, I think was. I think he was because the second one I did, I I gave it the muddy yellow water with the sky reflected in it. And, you know, just the bayous can be real reddy brown with the yellow like sky in the morning, early morning light on it. It was pretty. I didn't even take a photograph of it. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. I've already nailed it off. <laughs> wow. That was brave. I mean, just in case something happens in the mail. Yeah, I hope not. Oh, God. Maybe Fair they can enough. send you a good photo of it. Yeah. yeah. My cousin wanted to get it framed before her dad's birthday. Oh, that's great. So, Michael, is this a... a a mid, are you using kind of a mid-tone value right now or hold it? Yeah, it's definitely not the lightest light in there. Man, this isn't it interesting that after I got it covered, how bluey green this looks. Like I may have to kind of go back in and remove that or decide if that looks okay. Um, it's sure intense. But you can't really know colors until you get get it all covered um, just because you need something beside it to help it read or just you never know so anyways that's kind of interesting discovery so you know there's a good chance after class here I'll take my paper towel and wipe back a lot of this this blue that I'm not I'm not feeling it I mean, and then also these, um, the purple underneath, because of everything being so slick and non-absorbent, it is coming back through. So I do think this will definitely be a two coat painting, um, which is fine. And, you know, the second coat usually goes on pretty fast, just means I need to let it sit for, you know, a couple of days or a week, depending on how fast it wants to dry and get it built back up. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of purple showing through. Oops. Let's go ahead and in the last five minutes, get my light lights on there and see if that doesn't help. So. Do you think um, this is something where if you do want to go back in on a second um, layer that you might be able to incorporate into next week's lesson? Uh, I mean, I could. Um, yeah, um, yeah, I mean, we can definitely see how do I go back in and refine a painting because, yeah, it's pretty messy and pretty slippery. I'm just going to come in with a little bit of a yellowish white and cover the brights and see the really light areas of the sky and see if that works. Then I'm going to come in and do the lights in there, too, so. So, so, Michael, if we put the base on with um, out it being quite so red, making leaning it more toward the blue and the red, would that uh, fix that problem for the it red? It may, shirt? yeah, it may. Also, typically, you know, a lot of times I'll let my little sketch kind of dry a little bit, tack up a little bit. Yeah. And with the, when I do my panels, that they're much more absorbent. So that little thin wash of color soaks in so that's one of the reasons i like my paint to be a little bit more absorbent into my surface yeah well you're working against the odds today so that's all right yeah no it's and it's fun and it's also you know it's good to experiment with your media and your you know everything else just to kind of every once in a while just go yep i'm glad i do it how i do it because it works with the, my way. Otherwise, sometimes you do, you know, you're experimenting or, you know, you're using your friend's brushes or friend's colors or friend's panel. You know, you're out plein air painting. And you're like, oh, man, this is great. I should have been doing this, you know. So it's fun to, you know, you want to keep ex experimenting, trying different things. Otherwise, you know, just kind of get stuck in your way. And I am having fun. And it is just funny to watch. Watch the paint just slipping and sliding around. And it's also forcing me to have a lighter brush stroke a little bit when I want the paint to just sit on there nicely.
Now, Michael, I know you didn't use um, pure white. Did you add a little yellow to that? There is just a touch of my cooler yellow. Um, I, th okay. you know, my instinct would have been to use my warmer yellow, but I think with the purple, that would be just too big of a departure. So I went with the cooler yellow, and I could almost okay. create a transition, like add a little bit of red to that. Maybe will be nicer. <laughs> yeah, it's a funny painting. Definitely has a different feel and uh, a brush stroke than I'm used to. But I could see a lot of people really liking this, that, you know, like a more broken and a crisper edges in their paint. So, so could you say again, how do you um, prepare your canvas or your boards? Well, uh, typically it's a white uh, or a, a panel. The birch panels is my preferred surface. And then um, I will put down one coat of like a, um, a gloss medium which will create a divide between the gesso and the panel. Um, I'm still kind of experimenting with that, but otherwise I just, with my wood panel, I'll just do three coats of gesso. And I can put them on with a roller or a brush or uh, all sorts of things. And then oftentimes I'll give them a light sanding as well, depending on if I want a lot of uh, texture in there or not. I'm surprised that there's texture uh, from a birch panel that you that, that yeah, it, no, in my brush strokes and then how I apply the gesso. Yeah, the birch panel is pretty smooth. Yeah, so then the gesso, so then putting the gesso on, you've got to just like do you kind of rough it up with the sand sanding. Uh, yes, oftentimes I will kind of come back through, and that's actually I'm even smoothing it out more with the sanding. Um, but but it, it's not slippery though, huh? It a little bit, but it's, I use a gesso that's kind of absorbent as well. So yeah, I like it a little bit. I don't wanna sand it too much. I actually have gone uh, on instances and sanded too much and then had to go add another coat of gesso that's a little less. Um, um, yeah, I wanna make sure that it keeps its absorbency, which is, Michael, I had an instructor like, I don't know, I, I don't want to tell you how many years ago, but I'm ancient. So uh, the they we painted on wood panels uh, and we had to prime them to please the teacher with a wood sealer. And then we let, let it dry really good and give it a light sand and then put gesso on it. Like you say, the three coats. Yeah. And the last coat you would and you would put them on um like put a coat on let it and then it, it was like tedious to do the way that teacher but she said this will never your painting will never fail you because you're sealing the wood. Yeah, and, so that is something that I do is I do seal the wood and I use the yeah. uh, the gloss gel. Yeah. Or I actually am using a a wood primer. Yeah, like, we, we used a wood primer. Top. She wouldn't let us use a gel. Uh, well, I don't know if they had gels back then. We had to use a, a wood primer and sand yeah. it, sand it lightly, not not make it super slick, but sand night knock the nap down, she would say. And um, and then we'd put three coats and we'd have to let it dry a whole day between each coat because she could tell if <laughs> if we didn't prepare the wood and she would look at all of our panels when we came in, you know? Yeah. So the last can the last coat of gesso, she said, don't um don't sand it if you want to have a little a little grab. And if you want it to be a little smoother, 
use a brown paper bag, which is a, 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 a I don't know, it's like a goose these days. You can't find them, you know, brown paper bags, but <laughs> I, I buy ra a wrapping paper at the dollar store and I'll use uh, a, a small piece of that and just crumple it up, ma make it real soft, like, like smash it up in a ball and uh -huh. then, um, and then straighten it out. And, and that's my sanding for the last, last coat of the gesso. If I want to want it, you know, not yeah, that's a, interesting. a little bit of a nap. Before. So it's tedious if you do the panels right, but I guess she wanted them to last for a hundred years or more. Exactly, exactly. So Michael, this is uh, Susie, Susan. Um, I'm looking at your clouds and I really love the dark with the purple underneath. The clouds are beautiful. They are. Yeah, they really are. And I um, wanted to find out, um, somebody asked a question why you, um, set the, uh, the design in the alizarin because I'm so used to using my workhorse color, ultramarine. So in the classes I've taken with you, you seem to use alizarin all the time. Is that better than the ultramarine? I love your clouds, wow. Um, so I, I, alizarin red? Yeah. Alizarin crimson? Yeah, crimson. Is alizarin crimson better than ultramarine? Yeah. Oh, I don't actually use a uh, lizard and crimson though. I What's use the knocker down. Oh, is that what you're using? Okay. Yeah. So, um, do you? I noticed that you started with quinacridone, most of your paintings to uh, set the design. And is is that <laughs> the clouds are wonderful right now? But is that is there a purpose to that? Do you Again, see and they just it it seems like it oftentimes will just kind of disappear or blend into any colors that I mix okay. it with. Um and it's not so heavy like a ultramarine blue, like a big oh. thick, thick outline. Yeah. But yeah. I, I don't know. I'm I'm not thrilled with it right now because there is a lot of purple coming through. Oh, and man. I actually wanted this to be a little bit on the grayer side. Really? I love the clouds. Oh, thanks. I love it with the blue. It's just no, oh, thank you. Um, so yeah, that was the tricky thing okay. is that um, because of non-absorbent surface, um, I, uh, you know, I, it's, I'm glad you're liking its result, but it's not how I intended it necessarily. That's okay. And I would have liked it a little more neutral. This is pretty colorful, but that's, you know, again, just a matter of taste. Um, and maybe I'll oh. step away from it and take a little break and go, oh, that's actually a lucky accident. That was kind of nice that those, <laughs> um, you know, the clouds ended up purple and the, you know, I've got so much red outlined everything, but I'll have to see. Um, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was making a choice what, between ultramarine and and um clonacridin because right. that I last actually, painting i did in the, the last week in the class i got you probably it's on padlet i got so carried away with that uh red um clonacridin that i couldn't even cover it i i don't know if it's still on padlet i posted it i wanted to go back in there but i didn't know how to get to the old padlet link Oh, the old link will still work, yeah. But I, I think on Padlet, um, yeah, it's kind of weird. Like I, I created an account and it'll say something like go to your stuff or whatever. And if I click it, it'll say there's nothing here. But if I go to um recent places or something like that, I think it says recent, wow. then if I click on that, then it brings up any of these. Um, that I've subscribed to with Michael. Okay, that's great. And it's called Recent Places. Okay. I think that's what it says. It was kind of weird to uh, find to find that. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Because and I wanted to see what the comments were that you wrote on that. And I wanted to find out if you probably don't remember the painting, if you thought that painting 
um, merited uh, working on and putting in trees and stuff, or I should just let it go. <sighs> yeah, I'll try to get a look at it. Well, uh, don't touch those clouds. I love them. I don't know if anyone else does. <laughs> All right. Well, it's coming together piece by piece by piece. It's, um, you know, this was definitely a little bit of a, a wrestling match um, just to get it to where it is now. Um, but it's it's been fun. I like <clears throat> I like the image and the design. I think it might be, you know, worth me coming back in and revisiting it for sure after this first coat's kind of dry and coming back in and finessing and uh, all of that. But uh, yeah, the clouds were fun. They're not exactly blue and white. They're blue and purple and white, but uh, it's all right. I think they're beautiful. Works for me. All right, woohoo. All right, well, we'll start winding class down. You guys were awesome. Um, thanks for letting me talk so much about clouds. Um, the whole first hour and a half, just looking at all those photos and references. And it's kind of just such a, I was, you know, sitting around a couple of days ago and just kind of going, okay, how do I teach clouds when there's 1000 different types of clouds and iterations and effects and moods and everything else? So that's when I was like, well, let's get, let's look at our references and see so if we can paint you know a couple different types of clouds then it's just little variations on those you know is it a little warmer in color is it a little darker underneath is it um you know what is it that makes this cloud different from that cloud or what helps us to get the effect we might want from the cloud um, that we're putting into our painting because again we don't have to copy, we get to um, manipulate and change and move things around and uh, use our artistic license. I was going to tell, hey, Linda, um, you were talking about like the paper bag or doing that. Mm -hmm. um, at at U-Haul, they have these um, pre-cut big squares of newsprint, blank newsprint. Oh, um, wow. And I use that for like on my counter. I have a, a, a big counter and I use that under my easel. Um, oh, and it's great for any kind of crafts, but that might be a really nice final um, yeah. final one. But there, it's a huge box of, of these big, probably like three feet by four feet um, oh, piece. Perfect. Yeah, of news, newsprint. I'm gonna have to go check them out. There's a U-Haul in town. I'll have to go check it out and see so if they Michelle, have Michelle, which U-Haul do you go to? And because we live in the same city. Oh, I go to the one on Cornell over by across from Burgerville on okay. in Hillsboro. Okay, so is it like drawing paper? You could yeah, it's just a very light, it's not super thick. Um okay. but it's, it's packing paper for packing. Yeah, it's packing. Oh, you, yeah, can wrap, yeah, you can wrap it. your, your canvases. It. Um I uh, you can wrap canvases in it or, you know, it's um, it's just a great all purpose. It's Super. kind of a light tan color. Oh, thank you so much for mentioning that. That's great. Instead of buying it on a pad. Thank you. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you, Michelle. Kind of like butcher paper? Yeah, I guess that's what you would call it. Yeah, exactly. It's thinner than butcher paper. It's, you it's know, like drawing when you have to do uh, life drawing classes. <laughs> Yeah, it's what they use to wrap um, glassware and stuff with mm -hmm. sometimes, and then they'll put it in the bubble wrap. All right. It's it's not heavy. It's not real heavy. All right. Well, I can just keep poking at this for a long time, and I. It's beautiful. It's probably well, but um, thank you guys for uh, hanging out for another Wednesday morning class. That is a. <laughs> A bright painting, especially on the monitor. It's lovely. All right. <laughs> I like it too. And I thought it was a good idea to show the different pictures. Don't feel disillusioned, Michael, because we'd be critiquing people's paintings. So that was great that we were critiquing still um, something visual that you could learn from the photographs. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, and those clouds, I'll be able to come back in again as soon as they're a little bit 
dry um, and, uh, you know, make them a little grayer if I choose, but maybe the purple is the way to go. It's kind of fun. Makes them a little I, more exciting. More surrealistic. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So Great. can you see this monstrosity? <laughs> yeah, there it is. Would you continue? I said I didn't put the trees in because... I did two that last class. This was the one that I was ashamed of. So right, yeah, no, I remember where the clouds, the yeah, you know, the trees kind of went away. Um, I, yeah, I, it looks pretty nice to me. Should I work it, put trees in, and then work on clouds, or what's is, is it a throwaway? That's what I want to know. Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, can you share it on Padlet so we can get a better view? It of is it? on Padlet. And okay. that was what's so odd. I wanted to read people's comments. I didn't get a chance to read it, but I saw people. I have put two pictures on. Um, let's see. Michelle said to go to. Um, recents. Recents. And I, well, I'll do that. I won't take your time. But so I thought I maybe. What, what is the homework for this week? Maybe I can use homework this. Homework is blue skies and clouds. And maybe, maybe not purple clouds, but maybe oh. purple clouds. Don't you feel bad about that? I like it. I okay. love it. It's I love it too. Well, I, I, why are, because it's surrealistic and you, you want it to look realistic, Michael? Is that why you? Uh, I like just it? got caught off guard by the slipperiness is all. Oh, oh okay. Yep. Nope. It, all... it, it, it does feel different than the rest of your work. <laughs> it feels, yeah. I mean, it feels, it, 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 it does feel like there's uh, much more contrast in you than I would expect. Right, um, right, right. It's yeah. playful. Oh, I like that word. It's playful. That's a good word. It's, it's beautiful. <laughs> clouds are playful. Look at those clouds. They're having fun. Uh -huh. Well, thank you all very much. And so, yeah, your homework is uh, uh, sky painting, blue, blue, cloud, blue sky, white clouds, kind of a scene. And then thinking about sunset clouds coming up. And then we will okay. yeah, probably be doing waves and rocks after that. And then we'll get into trees after that. And then before we know it, we'll be working on our final project, whatever that is. So do you guys know, is this, this is an eight week class, am I Yay. right? Yay, I love eight yes, weeks. We got some time, so good. Yeah. Great. All right, Linda, you're all good. Everything's good. No questions. I'm, no, I love what you did. It's beautiful. I like the purple. I'm not offended at all. Sometimes, <laughs> the, sometimes the clouds out here are purple as can be. They're even more purple than that. And I thought the other day, I said, oh my God, if I painted that cloud as purple as it looks to me, no one would believe it. Uh, and, it and it's more purple than these are really. <laughs> yeah that's awesome. well, well it's great thank you all right sandy, i like it i like I'm just it i go down the list really quickly sandy you're doing okay everything if you're still there yep can you hear me uh, yep yep great just wanted to make sure you got everything you need and uh blue skies homework with white clouds yep all right got great. it all right thank you so much and karen you're doing okay karen Gettins? Oops, you're on mute. You're muted there, Karen. Uh, yeah, I'm, I yeah, kind of. <laughs> I'm I'm sick and I'm oh, like, no. I yeah, I I'm fine. <laughs> All right, we'll take your time on this one. No rush, and uh, hopefully you're feeling better. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thank my you. dad. My dad has COVID for the first time for him. Oh no! Yeah. Oh, no. And my mom's been in the hospital like ten out of less. Oh, oh my god! Uh, now they can't go back to the hospital. I guess I don't know what well, they do. What's wrong with your mom? Is she got COVID too? No, uh, some heart issues. Unfortunately, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. You got a lot on your mind. <laughs> yeah, they keep you busy. Keep well, you pray for them too. Prayers uh, for them. Thank you very much. And Susan, you're doing good. Everything's all yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to know. Uh, people wrote something about this monstrosity, but I'm. Going to go look, get back on that. Thanks to Michelle. She's always got great ideas. <laughs> and get on there and see what people wrote. If they nixed it or <laughs> thumbs up. Um, I loved the class today. I learned so much. And you really have given us tools on how to 
um, not just look at something and paint and copy, but how to navigate through it. If that oh, makes that's sense. a nice way to say it. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah. So hugs to you and everyone got to go. <laughs> okay. I got my plate full too. I got that sick dog and I'm going to be putting him down. So give me one second here. I'm going to do share. Uh, I'm going to the chat. And I'm posting that link. Can you copy and paste that link? That'll get you to the pat to the glowing color padlet. Oops, I oh, that. that's the problem. I couldn't get to glowing color. Okay, I'm doing it now. All right, you can click it or copy it. Okay, I will copy it. Let's see. It's it's loading now. So, um, well, I don't want to take anyone's time. They too want to get a uh, connection with you. I see glowing color. Yep. Super. So that was its own different link. Okay, uh, Michael, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And, and Michelle, good luck with your mother and your father. I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah. No, I think they're doing they're doing uh, pretty well. Thank you. You know, see, here's the thing. We're sick of COVID, but it's not sick of us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for a outstanding class. I know you don't think so, but I think so. Okay. Oh, you know, just a little wrestling. I don't mind rest doing wrestling. And I, I actually like showing that like that painting is, you know, is struggle and it is uh you know, it's not always smooth and everything else. And you. Oh, I thought it was great. We learned so much with you always. Learn how to compose. That's super. So good luck with your parents. And we'll see you next week. And goodbye to everyone. I love the people in our class. I wish we could keep it going forever. <laughs> They're awesome. All well, right. Well, guess Mark, what? I, I Michael, I also looked up on the winery that you gonna are your pictures up there? I've been to that winery. So I, I yeah, didn't remember. So all, all, all of the paintings in there are mine. Oh, okay. So yeah, I've been there. I showed it to my husband. He goes, We've been there a couple of times. It's a beautiful winery. And oh, good luck with uh selling those pictures. And oh no, I already sold them all. But um no, oh, just, congratulations. Yeah. It's uh, people that are building a gallery in, um, down in California, right oh. near the coast and wine area. So they were like, we, we oh, would like your works. Do you like coast paintings and winery paintings? And they're coming up to visit and look at work. And I just told them that that would be a great spot to see a bunch of work. I love your class. I have to go, but I want to look at this Padlet and see All right. who's my painting. <laughs> All right. Take care. You two um, take care and good luck with your family. And bye, yeah, everyone. It's the pleasure. And I just wanted to yeah, check in. Carol, Barbara, Michelle, I think Phyllis maybe just yeah. dropped off. But everybody's good. Everybody's I just have a question. Last yeah. minute questions okay. before we let I gotta each other go. go ahead. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Are you going bye. to do are you going to do um, a class on mop blending? Uh, class on, how much did he eat like, i'm not sure i understood you a class on mop blending with a mop brush oh uh i will i can definitely go over that a little bit um i should have even done that today that would have been a really useful tool for how crazy my paint was um but yeah i use them but i only have really lousy cheap ones so they're constantly losing hairs just and stuff was, in i there. just had a set of them seven seven mop brushes all different sizes i think they're good quality i haven't used them yet but the, the bad thing is the hairs come out yeah so definitely you know get them wet and kind of pluck at them lightly for a little bit and then dry them kind of roughly with a uh maybe an actual towel towel and you know without any paint in it and that will hopefully pull out a bunch of them i have to do that with those chip brushes and stuff that i use um right. otherwise they're you know the first couple times you use it it's like painting with a yeah, just loses all its hair. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but yeah, I think that would be an interesting um, additional tool to how you paint because you could really create those big soft gradient areas and then put your exciting clouds and stuff on top of that. So I think that's a good idea. I definitely use them um, from time to time. I try to often get away with using my um, you know normal brush with just a light pressure. But sometimes, you know, those mop brushes are where it's at. Really, really makes a soft, easy blend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I usually put the paint on and then move them with the mop brush versus trying to paint with the mop brush. It's more like I go in and... Oh, yeah, I don't paint with it. 
smooth like that. Yeah. Moving along. Hmm. All right. Great, Michelle. You're all good. Doing doing great. Got to good, um, take care of my granddaughter for the whole weekend uh, for the Ooh. first time ever. So we survived, and she's awesome. And so I'm looking forward to hopefully I'll get to paint this week. All right. Well, that's great. Congratulations. Um, yeah, that would have been a lot of fun, I'm sure. So you guys, awesome. Thank you for a first class. And I look forward to next class. And I'm like, sure my panels are prepped. <laughs> and uh, we'll talk soon, you guys. Take care. Thanks. Right. Thank you. Bye.